In this video, I'm going to give an overview of GitHub branches. There's not any code in this video. We'll save that for the video that follows this. So this video is appropriate for developer and non-developer alike. If you're Scrum Master, Product Manager, or Developer, I hope that you'll get a better understanding of GitHub branches from this video, or as I call it, the Control-Z of programming. Following this video in the playlist, we will have a technical demonstration where we show this in an IDE. If you are a software developer, I encourage you to follow along to that next video where you'll see those technical details. So first of all, what is branching? Well, if you're using distributed version control, something like GitHub, you're already using at least one branch. We're talking here about using multiple branches, but let's talk about the one branch that you are using. The branch you're using is the master branch. You likely started your repository with one commit, just like so. Now you make a second commit. And what you've done is you have just made a second commit onto this master branch. And if you continue making commits, you're going to continue to grow this master branch as we've just seen. We could continue to do that and have only one branch if we were maybe one developer in a small project. But even one developer in a small project, this concept of feature branches makes a lot of sense. It makes even more sense if you're on a bigger project and have multiple developers. So the way we branch is we can create a new branch and you see, we'll say, okay, this is feature branch number three. Maybe we create another branch, feature branch number two, and yet one more feature branch number one. So each of these are a snapshot of this repository at this point in time and each acts like an independent sandbox. Now, we can do our work in these branches, but at some point we have to bring the work back into master. So let's use these line lengths as a duration of the amount of work. Let's say that feature branch one was completed the first. So here's our work, and what we're going to do is a pull request and then a merge. And that effectively grows the master branch by this one feature. It's met our definition of done, perhaps it's past unit tests, code reviews, and even a technical debt analysis. Now, feature branch two, you see that one took a little bit longer, but no problem. It finally finished up, and then we said, okay, we've met our definition of done. We're ready to merge this into master. So we start with a pull request, and then we do a merge, and the merge is what actually puts this onto our master branch. Now you see, we still have one branch that's open, this branch called feature branch number three, but oh golly, guess what's gonna happen? The release date comes and we have to do a branch cut and feature branch three is not ready. No problem. We'll go ahead and release what we have. In the old days, if we were using one branch or maybe an older version control system that wasn't as sophisticated as GitHub, Mercurial, and, and the latest and greatest, we would have to wait until this third feature is complete. But with this concept of branching, we can merge only the ones that are complete and have met the definition of done. And then this last item, which missed the deadline, or maybe just happened to be completed after the deadline, perhaps intentionally, not a problem. Let's save it for the next release. So why do we want to branch? A big benefit is we all get to take a snapshot of the master branch at a point in time, and we can make changes on our feature branch without impacting master. As a matter of fact, we don't even have to merge these branches. We might decide that, you know, I tried this out, but it's not exactly what I wanted. So I'm just gonna delete the branch and maybe I'll go back and try a different concept. That's a really nice feature with branches is that ability to try things out before you merge, knowing that you're not impacting master. Another thing is multiple developers working on the same project. Each developer could have a separate branch or perhaps we could separate the branches by feature. In reality, these two will likely overlap because in agile development, we want to work on one task at a time. So likely there will be one feature with one developer working on it, and that will correspond to a branch. And we know the other item, one delayed feature will not hold up a release. So because branches give us the ability to take a snapshot at a point in time, play around, and then maybe merge or maybe not merge, it helps us to move faster and it helps us to experiment without experiencing any kind of negative impact on the timeline. It also allows us to queue up a lot of features and take only those which are truly ready. That's why I like to call GitHub branches the control Z of programming. This video is part of a playlist and the video that follows this will be a technical look where we see how GitHub branches actually work. I encourage you to follow along and watch that video as well and I look forward to seeing your comments. Thank you.